Hello everyone. I know I haven't posted for a long time, so I'm going to try and post more frequently. I know I've said that in the past, uh, so don't quote me on that. And uh, YouTube is going to actually remove my monetization, but I don't monetize my videos. Anyhow, um, I'm going to try and post a series of videos on scene nodes, on Cinema 4D's scene nodes. And I'm going to start from the very basics, uh, the basics that don't require any understanding of um, things like programming and loops and stuff like that, because there is a huge functionality that spans from the very beginner user and uh, you can make uh, quite interesting things. So what I'm going to do today is uh, the following thing. Imagine a scenario where you have an object, let's say a cube, and the cube has the lines on and is editable. Now I'm going to go to polygon mode and uh, I'm going to select all the polygons and I'm going to do a series of uh, modeling actions. So let's start with the inset. So I'm going to press I. I think you can find this here in the mesh. Somewhat inset these over here. You know, I can bring this up for fun. I'm going to do an inset and then the original selected polygons are still selected. Then I'm going to do an extrude and click and drag. Uh, then I'm going to do another inset. Then I'm going to do another extrude. And uh, let's assume that this is what I want to do. And it looks interesting. You know, you can add over here some uh, screen space, ambient occlusion, and it looks really fancy. So we've done this. Now, if I want to do the same actions to another object, I need to create an object. Uh, let's hide the cube. Let's set the sphere to my favorite type, which is icosahedron, change the segments, make it editable. And now let's try and remember what we did. We did a select all, we did an inset, and the inset doesn't work now because I have preserved groups, so let me undo this. So an inset of a certain uh, percentage or small amount, then an extrude, then another inset, I'm using my shortcuts now, and then another extrude, and I have the same thing. And every time I need to apply the sequence of uh, modeling operations to an object, I have to go and do the whole thing again and again. So the question is, is there a way where I can automate that process and I can do it on any object I want and even parameterize it for different objects, different parameters, different inner extrudes and extrudes and whatnot. And the answer is yes. And that is one of the very easy things to do using uh, Cinema 4D's scene nodes. So let's begin with a fresh scene. And I'm going to close this now. Now, first of all, I have my own uh, nodes uh, layout here. And uh, it's very, very simple. If you go in your uh, default uh, layout, and uh, that has this nodes over here, I do not want the console now. So I undock it and I close it. And then I take my viewport and I dock it over here. You just drag those little three dots and I make some space. And I save this as uh, the my nodes layout so i can go to my nodes and not save the other one i can turn off the nodes one so it's not populating this uh, very very important bar so how do we do this well let's begin with uh, our sphere and then we can transfer what we're doing to any object and i'm going to do the same thing now you don't need to make it editable but you do need to make it an icosahedron to make me happy and there you go this is the object upon which we're going to apply all these things. And in order to store those modeling actions, we need what is called a modifier. So just type modifier here and go and find this, the nodes modifier. And uh, this is a deformer, but it's a deformer that uses nodes to deform the object. And uh, just like with any other deformer, you can make it a child or a sibling of this object under a common parent. So what does this mean here? Make sure you select it. Uh, if you see something like this, where it says root, you're not in the right context. You need to select this after you create it, and it will bring you into this nodes modifier context. And I'm going to call this my special deformer. There you go. So my special deformer. And you can see the name over here. So what does this do? This reads the geometry of the object, does some operations in here, and then whatever we connect here becomes the object. And the simplest way to see how this works is to click in here, type C to bring up uh, the search, and type cube. 
And if I take this node cube and put this in the output, I get a cube. That's it. And this cube has now all the attributes here. So the modifier has totally replaced the model of whatever is above this. And it can be any kind of model. And it's replaced it with whatever we're telling it to do. So let's go back to the actual operations. So let's delete this. Now I want to do, first of all, an inset. So click here, press C and type in set. If I type properly, it will come up. So this is the inset. Right, that's an inset node. And what else did we need earlier? We needed an extrude, but let's stick with the inset for now. Now let's go to the parameters of the inset. When you select it, you get the attributes here. Uh, I want it to be proportional, so it's a percentage of uh, the size of the edge. Now, if you're wondering why this turned red and why everything has disappeared, there's a general concept. If you add any node here, the modifier uh, starts working. And because there's nothing connected to this, it's actually uh, giving us a result of nothing. We want to take the geometry from the parent object, which is here. We want to inset it, and then we want to spit out the geometry. And immediately, we get that inset effect. And I'm going to make a bit more space here because I don't need to see the object manager that much. And you will see now, if you select this inset and you change the value, you get that original effect on all the polygons. That's excellent. So let's try this with an extrude. So press C, type extrude. This is the extrude that we're looking for. And you can actually go and drop it. It, it does a slight highlight on the line and it will intercept that line. Ooh, that's interesting. Now, here you can see that it's uh, extruding everything. It's not extruding those original polygons. So this is the first concept you need to remember. If you want to follow along in the same way we did this, there's the concept of the active selection. So let me uh, undo a few times and go back to that original thing. There we go. I'm going to remove my cube. So we are in component mode. Let me go back to my startup. And we have all the polygons selected. Cinema 4D has a concept that's called the active selection concept. And that means that for modeling tools, if nothing is selected, the tool you apply, and let's say we're going to do an inset, applies to everything. Okay. Now, if I press D to extrude, it's going to extrude everything. And if I preserve groups, you'll see it will do something very similar to what we did before. That's because we had nothing selected. But if you want to apply the effect the way we did it, you need to select all your polygons, then you do your inset, and the active selection is the original selection, which was all the polygons, and those polygons now are the ones that are highlighted because all the other polygons were generated after the action we did. And this is something that you have been working with, this concept, for decades, but you never realized that you were doing actually this thing. So we need to find a way to translate this select all and active selection into the node context. So let's go back here, let's activate my uh, node setup, and let's uh, click on this and see uh, what the problem may be. So the only thing you need to change is to make sure that that select all exists as an active selection. And uh, here, there is no selection. We haven't defined a selection to this. If this were a, an editable object, and I'm going to show you what I mean. If this were an editable object, and I had all my polygons selected here, we would see a totally different story. Look at that. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. But because the procedural sphere didn't have a selection, because we hadn't made it into polygons yet, this selection doesn't exist. And therefore, we are required to do it inside the nodes context. But if you're working just with editable objects, you can create that initial selection uh, of all your polygons, which looks like this. And then that is going to be propagated down the line uh, when the selection string is set to default. There are some details about this. What does default mean? You can use some words. If you go to the help, it shows you uh, what you can use in this selection string field. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to show you how to do this particular 
operation. So let's go back to our um, procedural sphere and see how we can insert that original selection here. Cinema 4D's C nodes has many selection nodes. So press C and type selection. Now you can always open up uh, this over here and go to nodes and you can do the same searches here. Uh, I like to press C because it makes me look smarter. But anyway, let's type selection. And uh, let's see what we have available here. I'm going to go to list mode and make these a bit smaller. And we have nodes selection, no assemble selection. Go down, go down, go down, selection, selection, facing. Hmm, maybe I need to type select. There we go. Select, let's go down, select. And here we have a node that says select. So let's drag this in here and see what this does. This one here allows you to create a selection. And uh, what we want to uh, create, we need to store it in the active selection, that original selection that gets carried over when we do consecutive modeling tasks. And if you go to the attributes, you can see that this select node allows us to select points, edges, and polygons. And polygons is the default. And the target where this selection is going to go is the active selection. But what do we want to put in here? Well, we want to put all polygons. So just go and type all and click outside. So now the active selection after processing this node is going to contain all the polygons. But which all polygons? Well, we want the ones, the original ones, uh, the ones that are in this state. And these are the ones that are coming from this little port over here. So take this little port and put it here and tell the select to continue the operation using that active selection. And now I'm going to turn this on because I had it off. And now it's doing exactly what we want it to. Fantastic. Let's continue by making a bit more space. And this node represents that initial select all. So let me undo here and let me deselect everything. I'm going to click here. So when you press command A over here, these polygons now are saved in the active selection. And whatever modeling operations we do manually, this selection is going to stay with us. It's going to persist. And this is exactly what this does. So select all, put them in the active selection, then we inset, and then we extrude. Let's now continue with uh, the other operations. We had another inset. You don't need to recreate it. You can just take this, press Control, or command if you're on a Mac and make a copy. And because we're going to do another extrude later on, you can select this and you can control drag it over here. So now I want to do another inset. If you want to see how it looks, just link it up. There you go. And we're going to change the values later. And then we're going to do another extrude and over there. So now you can go to this extrude and you can negate the extrusion. And let's assume that this looks uh, exactly like the object you're trying to make. Maybe you feel a bit adventurous and you take another two of these, you make a copy and you say, let's string these together as well. And uh, here you go and you say, now let's make it positive. So I'll make this thing a bit pointy. And even you can add some variation. You can do whatever the node allows you to do. Add some subdivisions here and uh, so forth. But uh, for what it's worth, let's assume that now this deformer is ready. Well, that's just about it. You can actually go and save it in your asset manager and all that. I'm not going to deal with that quite yet. But this object here, this modifier deformer, you can name it anything you want, can be applied to any object in any scene. So let's copy it from this scene. Let's create a new scene. Let's go and get another object. Let's get something very interesting, a capsule. And uh, let's paste our modifier here. And there you go. We now have a modifier that allows us to build this type of object. So to close this off, uh, I'm going to show you how you can expose the parameters of this. So you can double click and bring up the node setup, or you can go to your own node setup and make sure that you're clicking on this. If it says scene nodes, again, you're in the scene context. That's why you see this route. Make sure you always click on this to see the contents of your node. So what are the parameters uh, I want to expose? Well, 
the first one is this inset and I can um, reduce the number so we can see better what's going on there we go so I'm selecting the inset and uh, the first parameter I want to control is the amount of that inset and I'm going to leave it at a default of 50. If I want this parameter here or any parameter to appear on my modifier on my deformer currently it has nothing it's quite simple you select the node and uh, we need to see that particular parameter on the node and the best way to do that just like we do with redshift and so forth is to go and uh, control click on that parameter on this little circle any of these circles it's going to expose that parameter so I'm going to go and say I want to control click on the inset and there it is and now all you have to do is just drag it off and release your mouse. You don't have to bring it here. You release your mouse and it says add new input. And look at that. We have this new input here, which says inset. Fantastic. So I can uh, say initial inset. So you can double click initial inset. Fantastic. And let's go and expose a few more things. So here's the extrude and let's go and uh, control click on this. And you can drag this here, add new input, and call this xdude one And you can continue onwards, and you can take this inset, and you can do this with any of the parameters. Control click, inset, add new port, call this inset two. And let's continue down the line, extrude, control click, and this is over here. I have the habit of dragging it there, but it's not necessary. And you can see and call this extrude 2 and we have two more to go inset control click extrude control click drag this add new port and drag this add new port and we call this inset 3 enter and extrude 3 did I type properly extrude I'm going to call this extrude because why not and that's it your little modifier is complete with all the settings uh, you require so let's go to our normal uh, interface and this over here is ready to be used it can be animated and you can do all sorts of things and you can expose all sorts of uh, parameters and do very interesting stuff and that's pretty much it um, you can go and search for various modeling tools and uh, apply them to your chain to create all sorts of interesting effects. We are going to see more of these as we move forward with other tutorials. Well, thanks for watching.